we're here at Park Street. Just saw a uh, production of Floating on an Oak Hair Cloud. It went really, really well. Uh, it's always so funny when I when you go and see plays and how sometimes the vision that's in my head is completely different than what I see on stage and then sometimes the things that I see in my head come alive completely. Uh, the way that uh, pot is described in the play, it's a cloud, so it's like seven characters and they surround the main character and the way they did it today was just like, it was just perfect, exactly the way I saw it. Uh, so uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go talk to some of the cast and I'm going to go talk to the director. So let's go talk to some of the cast, okay? Um, I like how you bring in stuff that's more serious than pot. First of all, like the math, especially. Right. A lot of kids are aware of math and pedophilia. Or that, or that the people who use it are exactly like mine. Like they're at the top of their class and they're using it to get they're using it to get ahead. Like they're not they're not scumbags. Yeah. They're they're using it because they have so many so much expectations on them and, and that's the way they use it. I knew right away that Jamie wasn't gonna be if someone was gonna die, it wasn't gonna be Jamie. It was gonna be someone who you didn't expect. And then the way that uh, what's the, what's her name? Who played Maya. That's this. Oh, the way she did the the uh, her her death scene was just like like I was like I've seen it I've seen it before I wrote it and I was just like <laughs> did you guys like being in the in the cloud? It was it was a fun experience. It was fun. You guys looked like I really liked um, a lot of the like the reaction shots were perfect. You know like when um, you know like uh, am I on am I am I on a horse? Am I am I on, am I on a cruise ship? You you guys were so. Uh, scornful of, of, uh, of TJ. It was kind of just hard perfect. To <laughs> no, I know. I was telling I was telling your teacher that um, the way the size and the, the way that you look and the way that you played it was exactly how I saw TJ. Okay. So uh, now what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna go talk to Leanne and Neil, who is the director here. And uh, the cool thing about uh, this, how all this came about, is that there is a conference here in Ontario called the Code Conference, and Craig was there. Craig, uh, shake the camera, say hi. <laughs> and Leanne came up and said, social awareness plays, what have you got? And the first play that Craig put into her hands was floating on a note for cloud. And she loved it, and here we are. So now let's go talk to her. I fell in love with the play after reading a few, and I was sitting in the staff room and I was laying on the couch and I had my feet up, and I read it and I could not stop reading the pages, and then I knew. So, always a good sign, always a good sign. And now that you, you have it up, you still have the same... I do. And every time I see it, there's something new and something more exciting that I was doing. This so. The Maya monologue just broke my heart. I thought it was so, it was so, it was so special. It was, yeah. like, it was just like, oh, I was telling the kids, it's like, I, I wrote it, I know what happened. And I've seen it, and it was just like, so it was really, really good. What's the response been? The response cool. has been really, really positive. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people are saying, you know, they liked it because it's not preachy. And it's a good message, and it gets people thinking. And it's been surprising that some of the other kids who have put up their hands and said, well, somebody asked me to try marijuana. And you're thinking, oh, well, you know. And then the cast would talk about it and be very candid with them. That's been a phenomenal experience for the parents to be able to say, you know, this is how you don't, this is how you can say no without, without being, you know, criticized by those kids. Well, that's the whole point, is at the end, it has to be a question, because there has to be the question of not evolving answers, it's not my job, it's not my job to tell a 12 year old or a 15 year old or a 20 year old or a 30 year old, you know, don't do this, you okay. shouldn't do that, but you have to be the one who answer the question for yourself. So how wonderful that, you know, to go to a feeder school and some 12 year olds can go, oh, oh, I'm not alone, this happened, this happens everywhere. We had another really interesting comment from one of the kids. <laughs> At the very end of the story, you know, we were doing the wrap up, and everybody was talking, and we pulled down the lights up, the teachers, everybody's relaxed, and one little boy looked up and he said, what did he say? Did he choose? What did he choose? And the cast just sort of paused, said, well, and threw it back out to the group. What do you think he should have chosen? So it was interesting to hear them talk. Well, obviously he should choose his family. That's the right thing to do. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. It's good. For the family. Okay. Awesome. That's great. Thank you so much, Dad. I'm so happy that I'm able to come. Thanks for coming. Yes. Thank you.